EPA Administrator Michael Regan and NAAC President Derek Johnson will travel to Africa to promote climate equity. The two black leaders will meet with officials in Mozambique and Ghana to talk about solutions on how to build a more climate and environmentally resilient Africa. I spoke with both Regan and Johnson about the trip's agenda and the importance of connecting the continent with the black diaspora here in the U.S. Uh, and it's not lost on me that you, know, you being uh, the first black man to lead the EPA um, and going alongside President uh, Johnson, two black men representing the highest levels of government and civic society going to the, the continent to help uh, solve some of the most vital and modern challenges for the region in terms of environmentalism and climate. What does that mean to you in terms of that significance? Uh, we both recognize what we represent as we leave uh, the United States to go back to the continent of Africa. And so we recognize that there is a connection there. Obviously, we're going to lay a wreath at the home of W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, we're going to spend some time with the uh, Ghanaian leadership and the leadership in Mozambique, just talking about what we see as Black men here in the United States and what we're able to do in our leadership capacity here domestically and try to enrich that opportunity uh, with uh, countries in, in on the continent of Africa. So it's a huge, humbling opportunity, and I can't tell you how excited I am to represent the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, you know, it's not lost on me that uh, just about every indigenous population domestically or internationally, every black and brown community domestically and internationally are seeing a disproportionate impact to uh, environmental challenges, to air quality challenges. Uh, there are technological solutions. There are opportunities for economic development and investments. And most importantly, uh, not being paternalistic, but communities have had these solutions for decades. It's time for us to match the resources and the technology with some of their solutions. And that's what Derek and I are trying to do. We're trying to take some of these partnerships that we've developed here domestically and export those internationally. And, and Mozambique and Ghana are two excellent partners for us to do that. Ghana is more of a traditional partner uh, to the US government and to EPA. We have about a decade old relationship in Ghana. Mozambique, more so off the beaten path. Significant opportunities, again, to really develop strong partnerships on youth engagement, women's empowerment, technologies to tackle climate and air quality uh, implications. So, you know, this, this is this is going to be a significant trip, a significant mission for the Biden-Harris administration. And I'm very proud to do it with Derek. Listen, we have to be very knowledgeable about our history. We have to know where we come from and what makes us who we are. And so I'm very excited to, to take this trip to do a little bit more exploration for myself, both personally and professionally. Uh, it's, it's critical that we connect back to Africa and understand where we come from and, and recognize that there are global partnerships that we need to strengthen in order for us to excel as, as human beings. Civil rights is also inclusive of climate justice. There, if we don't have a planet, there is no advocacy around education or voting rights to advocate for. And that as an EPA administrator, that his job cannot just stop at the borders of this country. His job also is inclusive of other developing nations as they consider their energy generation, as they consider how they manage wastewater or clean water. All of those things will have an impact. If we don't address it globally, we will feel a negative impact locally. The continent as a whole is the fastest growing continent on the globe with over 1.2 to 1.3 billion uh, in populations, majority of whom are younger than 25. And if you think about cell phones, this country went through a whole process of wiring, hard wiring phones all across the country. Well, Africa jumped over that, went straight to cell phones, so you don't have house phones. Now we are going to where Africa was in terms of cell phones. That's an opportunity here, it's an economic opportunity. It's not only economic opportunity, it's a community health opportunity here. It's not only a community health opportunity, it's the ability for the, the, the continent not to be exploited for its minerals, but to lead the conversation around what a global economy could look like driving renewable energies in ways in which uh, build not only the health of the continent, the health of the community, but the economic stability 
of the nations that are that make up the continent of Africa. It is important for us as an organization, it is important for us as an African American community to recognize that the, that our history is tied to the diaspora, whether there are African Caribbeans, African Latinos, uh, African Brazilians, or Africans on the continent. We are part of the human family with a distinctive uh, 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 history that's shared and not uh, taken apart. The expertise that we have learned in this country, the innovation that, that's in the Caribbean, the, 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 the drive that you can find in Nigeria, all of those things that if you partner those things together, it is unmatched. And we need to double down on that because as we look into the future, the future must be inclusive of a prospering African continent, not a future of a continent being exploited for its resources or its people.